Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Python series. In this video, I'll be teaching about for loops. All right, guys, welcome back. This time we're going to be learning about for loops or for statements. And a for loop is essentially a way of repeating code. So very often you will find yourself having to run the same code over and over, especially on something like a list, right? You can imagine that you have a list of items such as a list of names and you need to convert them to all uppercase or print them out or send them somewhere or something like that or do some calculations which are with a list of numbers. Um, anything where you need to repeat code, usually you're gonna need a loop for. So one way of looping in Python is with a for loop, okay? And there's different types of loops, but the for loop is the first one that we're gonna learn about. Now let's say that you do have a list of names, so victims. So a list of some of my victims over the years. So we have John, Mary. So now I'm gonna give you a simple for loop and then I'll explain it after. So we're gonna do for victim in victims, colon, enter, print victim dot upper. All right, so here's our first for loop. So what this will do is essentially go through each of the, the victims in our victims list, each of the elements in our victims list, and then print it out in uppercase letters one by one. So let's just run this to verify that fact. There we go, we get John, Mary, Bob, and Jane, all in uppercase, perfect. So this is actually in pretty clear English, um, but the way that this works is you have for, which is how you declare that you're essentially about to write a for loop here. And then you have a victim, which is just a name that you can choose for the variable in the loop. So each element in your loop, when you're looping in your for loop, can be represented by this variable that you name here. So that's why we can do victim.upper. It's a way of representing a singular element in the loop. And then you have in victims, so the name of the thing that you're looping through, in this case, a list of victims. So what you're really saying is you have this list of victims here, and then for each of these victims, you're gonna give me this variable that I can use and then do whatever I want with. In this case, we're just printing it out in uppercase letters. So what I mean by looping is essentially you're running the same piece of code inside of this for loop here over and over and over for each element. That's what I mean by a loop. It's also called an iteration. An iteration is another name for loop. So you can say that this for loop here is going to loop four times because there's four elements in this list of victims. So for each victim, we're going to print them out in uppercase. I'm kind of repeating myself, but I just want to be clear on what's happening because it can be a little confusing at first, all right? These are written differently than other languages such as Java and C++. And this is really, really cool because behind the scenes, you have this variable being assigned to the next available element in the list. So we start off this way. First, you start off with nothing. Then you get to this first line here and you're saying, give me this victim variable and assign it to the value of the first element in the list, which is John. And then for John, we're gonna run the code inside of the for loop, which is just to print it out. And then after that is done running, it's going to loop again or iterate again. So it's going to reassign the value of victim to Mary and then print it out again. That's a, that's a second loop being completed. And then third loop, you're gonna assign victim to Bob, print it out, and then finally Jane, and then done, boom. So that's how that would work behind the scenes. So each time a single iteration of the loop has run, the victim variable will be assigned to the next element in the list. So what if we want to go backwards though? What if we want to travel backwards through the list instead of this way? We can go from Jane to Bob to Mary to John. I mean, there's, there's usually a bunch of ways you can do stuff in programming, but a simple way you can do it is just by taking this, cutting it with control X, and then do reversed. Reverse is a function built into Python that takes a list and then outputs a new list with all of the elements reversed. So in this case, it's still looping through it the same way, except that it's looping in reverse order because Jane is now the first element, Bob is now the second element, Mary's the third element, and John is the last element. So it's gonna do this exact same thing, but backwards. Boom, there we go. And again, we can add as much code as we want as long as it's indented properly. So print, and we can say, died by eating too much cheese. That's a terrible way to go, isn't it? Here we go, so we get Jane died by eating too much cheese, Bob died by eating too much cheese, Mary died by eating too much cheese, and then John died by eating too much cheese. Very sad. So let's give you some more examples just so I can nail this concept into your brain. So we'll have a variable called total sum that's gonna be equal to zero. And then let's also have a list of numbers, so numbers. And then now we want to loop through each of these numbers in the list and then add them all together and then store it into the sum variable. 
and then print it out at, when we're done. So we can do for number, which represents a single number in the list, in the actual list that we're looping through. Then we'll do total sum is equal to total sum plus number. So what this will do is loop through each of the elements in the list, each of the numbers in the list, and then add it to the current value of total sum to reassign the total sum variable to whatever that new sum is. And then now outside of the loop, we fixed the indentation here, so we're now outside of the loop here. We're going to go ahead and do print sum of all the numbers. And we'll say total sum. That's one way you could do that. And then print it, run this. So now we'll run this and see what we get. We get sum of all the numbers is, is 55. So hopefully that's correct. That should be 55, okay. So hopefully that helps your understanding of this if the first example was a little confusing. Um, what you could also do is, you know that whatever has to be in here is pretty much just a list, right? So you could essentially just take this, control X, and then replace it with a list directly, a list literal. You don't have to actually have a variable in there if you don't want to. And then now it does the same piece of code, right? So for each of the elements in the list, you're still having a variable called number that you can do whatever you want with. In this case, we're adding it to whatever total sum is and then reassigning sum to that new sum and then printing it out. And boom, still 55, perfect. So in other languages, you usually have something called a for loop. The name is the same, it's still a for loop or for statement, except that it's usually not done in this way. Usually you do have a variable such as number in this case that goes alongside the for loop, but the number is usually represented by a number itself that counts the number of times that the loop is going to be looping for. It's kind of hard to explain if you're not familiar with other languages, but just know it's different. So, so what I'm saying is, what if you want to loop a specific amount of times instead of being based on a specific amount of elements in a list, right? Um, in, the previous ex in the previous examples, we looped however many times there were elements in the list. But let's say that for some reason we want to loop only five times to do something five times, okay? So one way you can do that is just by doing for i, just, you know, whatever variable name you want to call it. I'll just call mine i, and then we'll say in range. And inside of range, we put five. And so what this will do behind the scenes, if you do control Q while having your mouse on this, do control Q, and it says range, blah, 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 returns an object that produces a sequence of integers from start to stop exclusive. So with all that said, what that really means is it gives you a list. You can think of it as giving you a list from that has values ranging from zero to four, okay? Not, zero, not one to five, but from zero to four. That's just how it works. So if you wanted, you know, from zero to five, you can just change this to six, right? So behind the scenes, that gives you that little object or that list, whatever you want to call it, and then you can run some code for each of the element elements in that list. So we can do print i, and let's just see what it prints out to verify. So yeah, we get zero, one, two, three, four. So you can really think of this i variable here as representing the iteration, the number of the iteration that your loop is on. So we know our loop is going to be run five times. It's going to run this piece of code here five times just because this gives us a, a list of five different values. So you can think of this as a counter that represents the iteration that you're on currently. So that's why it's called i, stands for iteration or index. I guess the context changes depending on what you're doing. Iteration, there we go. So you can call it whatever you want, but I like to call it i, especially because in other languages, that's what it's called. You can call yours whatever you want. So I'll give you another example. Let's say that we do have our victims list again. So let me just uh, re-put that for us here. Let's say we have a list of victims and we still want to loop through each of them and then print them out one by one. So you could do it the way I showed you before, which is just again, for victim in victims, and then do print vic uh, just victim like that. If you've seen the list episode, you know how to access a individual element from a list just by using its index. So another way you could do it, this is kind of like a kind of a weird way is this might look weird to you at first, but we can do it like for i in range. And then now inside of here, we'll do length of victims. And then we'll do print victims i. Okay, so what this will do is essentially give us a list that ranges from zero to three. So zero, one, two, three. Just because this here, this length function provided by Python will take this list here of victims and then return the number of items in that list. In this case, there's four. So you're, essentially you can think of this as passing four into the range function. So now the range function will give you a list of zero, one, two, three. And then now for each of those values in zero, one, two, three, you have I, and then now you're accessing using the index, 
So you can think of i now as representing the index, so you can rename this to index if you want to. And so for each iteration of this for loop here, this index will change depending on what loop you're on, starting from zero all the way up to three. And then you can access individual elements from the victims list depending on that index, by their index, okay? So that may be a little confusing. If you don't really understand it too well, then don't worry about it. You can pause the video or play around with this after. I just wanted to show you this in case you want to see how to do that, especially if you're coming from Python from another language. And with all this stuff, as usual, don't get you know sad or anything if you can't figure it out or if it's kind of tricky on your first look. I felt that way when I was first learning how to program all these things. Um, you know, you start to understand it through practice, right? So as you practice and as you write more for loops or statements, you will start to understand them better and it won't, you know, you'll just be able to write them with your eyes closed eventually, okay? So just maintain that philosophy, all right? So the last thing I wanna show you are the continue, continue and break statements. So continue and break are different statements within Python that allow you to do stuff within a loop. So let's just say that we have a loop and we're looping, let's say we wanna loop five times again, just like before. So let's say for i in range five, now let's just say for some random, random reason, we want to break out of the loop entirely, stop looping anymore, once we reach a certain iteration of the loop. So a way you can do that was is with a break. So we can do if i is equal to three, then we'll say break. So if we run this, you're not gonna notice anything, right? Because we're not printing that, because we're not printing anything out to be noticed, but we can do that if we want to. We can do else and then print i. So now, so now the way that this will work is um, if the i value has a value of three, then it's gonna get out of this loop entirely and not run anything anymore. But if i is not equal to three, then it's just going to print out that value, okay? So if you run this, we get zero, one, and then two. And then on the next iteration, you could expect that to become three. And when it becomes three, um, it reaches this and breaks, and now it's not gonna run any more code anymore. That's what it means to break. It's going to entirely break out of the loop and not run the loop anymore. And it's going to run whatever code it comes after the loop at that point, okay? And we'll see this again in the future at some points. It's a pretty useful feature. And then now there's another similar one we can use, which is called a continue. So continue is kind of the opposite. It's a very similar though. It's not going to break out of the loop entirely, but it's going to stop that iteration. So if for some reason there's any code after this or anything at all, it's not gonna run that code and IntelliJ is actually highlighting this to warn you it's not gonna run that code because once it reaches the continue statement here, it's going to skip to the next iteration of the loop. So you're gonna go zero, one, two, skip, and then four, and it's not gonna to go to five because it's just zero through four. Um, so run this and you get zero, one, two, four, just like I said. So that's how continue works. It doesn't break out of it entirely, but it skips that iteration of the loop. Okay, guys, and that's all I got for for loops and for statements in Python. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and hopefully you found it informative. Now you know how to loop through stuff in Python and also you now know how to loop through just random code, repeat code however many times you want to using the range function. Um, it's a very, very powerful feature to know how to do and we're gonna be using for loops very, very much in the future, so stay tuned for that. And of course, now you also know how to use continue and break statements, which is also very useful. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for next episode where we learn about the while loop. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I wanna tell you is that if you wanna support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. 
and uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.